Hey, welcome back. Today's going to be a bit more of a lengthy episode. We're going to run through what the difference between the encoder and the decoder is, and we're also going to be looking at masked multi-head attention today. Okay, so just first of all, congratulations. You've made it through the hard part. The encoder is done. The decoder is very similar to the encoder, but there's just um, a couple of differences between the two. Okay, so just to remind you of where we're at, and let me just um, bring up my pen again. Love this little uh, Surface Book pen, to be honest. Okay, cool. So we have our source sentence, which is in our source language. And we've looked at what this embedding layer consists of. So that's the embedding and the position encoding. And we've looked at what's inside of one encoder layer. And we've also looked at how to build up the, the, the whole encoder stack. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the decoder and the decoder will be responsible for, for, for the target. Now I'm going to dive into a bit more information than how this high level diagram actually looks more into to, to what it looks like. Um, so inside of one decoder layer, we have some differences between what's in there and what's in the encoder layer. However, we have lots of similarities as well. So the first thing to notice is this last sub layer, which is exactly the same as what's in the encoder. It's a position wise feed forward network followed by a residual layer normalization. And as in the encoder, the residual layer normalization is in basically every one of the three sub layers which are in the decoder. Now the two differences are one, this mask multi-head self attention, and this is what we'll be looking at today. And two, the encoder decoder multi-head attention as well. And we can see that we have some external inputs coming into this encoder decoder multi-head attention. In this attention block, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, look, try and find me the, or, or use the encoder and use the representations of the decoder so far to try and find what words we should eventually decode. Now, similarly to what we can see from the previous, um, from, the, from the encoder layers, the output of one decoder layer forms the input into the next decoder layer. Okay, so there's a difference in the transformer between training and testing. So let me talk about training, then I'll talk about testing, and then we can get on to multi-head self-attention or masked multi-head self-attention. So one thing that was missing from the, uh, not the previous diagram, the diagram before where we just had this was um, this, this embedding layer down here. So let me run through this once more. Our source comes in, we embed it, we run it through our encoder. Now, as we know with machine learning, we're, we're, going, we're going to need a loss, some target sentence to, to work the loss out against. Okay, during training, we have access to this target sentence, right? Um, let me just check what's on the, okay, yeah. Uh, so during training, we have access to this target sentence. And um, what we're going to be doing is, for, for efficiency purposes, we're going to be feeding in the whole target sentence at once, okay? So here we have a start of sequence token. And what we want to do is, in, in the real world, what we want to do is we want to feed in the start of sequence token. We want it, so we have the whole source sentence. We want to feed the whole source sentence in. We want to then feed in the uh, start of sequence token. So this will be the first iteration of the decoder. And we want to predict the word I from just feeding in this source sentence and the start of sequence token. And then we're going to concatenate the word I onto the start of sequence token. So it'll be start of sequence I. And then again, using this whole source sentence, we want to try and predict uh, the next word, which will be am, okay? And then we're going to concatenate am into SOS I, and so we have SOS I am. Again, using the, the source encoding, we then want to try and predict the word a, and so forth, okay? Now, in uh, this is in the real world in, in, in an inference setting. Now. During training, we actually have access to, to, the target, uh, to the target sentence, right? We're not going to use it in the same way as testing, but what we can do is we can say, hey, look, um, instead of us having a for loop over every single word that you generate, how about we mask out some of the illegal words? And this is where masked self-attention comes in. So multi-head attention, standard multi-head attention, uses attention to get representations for each word. And we've already looked at how this works for encoding the source sentence. Basically, every word looked at every other word to compute a representation. So that means it was bidirectional. It means that the word here, the word main, could look at hoon to actually incorporate um, its meaning into, into this word. But there's a difference when decoding, and that is we shouldn't be looking at future tokens because we don't actually know what they are yet. You know, when we're... Um, 
if we're decoding I am, we, ha we, we shouldn't actually be looking at the word student to work out the representations of I and am because we've not decoded the word student yet. We don't actually know what's X time steps into the future. So mass multi-head attention is a strategy to tell the model that during training, you're not allowed to look at future tokens. So we will input the whole sentence into the transformer, and this is for efficiency purposes. It will make training faster by doing this, but we'll tell the model, hey, look, anything which is in the future, you're not allowed to look at. And we use masking as a way to do this. Okay, so our mask is going to be in T by T, where T is the target sequence length. So this will be a square matrix. So let's, um, uh, let me run through the slide and then I can just draw a quick example up here. So this means for every token, an illegal location will be all the future tokens we're not meant to have access to. So at time equals one, we don't have access to any words which are greater than, uh, greater than t equals, uh, greater than t is one. And at t equals two, we don't have any access to words greater than, uh, greater than or past the second word. So, uh, let's just run with I am a student. So this will be our target. Okay, so what we're saying is, um, if our time step is zero, then we're not allowed to look at these words. If our time step is two, we're allowed to look at this one. Uh, let me just draw X's. If our time step is two, we're, we're allowed to look at the first word. Um, but we're not allowed to look at the future words. And of course, we're allowed to look at ourselves. If our time step is three, then we're not allowed to, uh, we're allowed to look at ourselves and the previous words, but we're not allowed to look at the word student. We don't know what the word student is. We don't know what this word is meant to be yet. So how can, it's not fair for us to compute, or it's not legal really, for us to compute a representation of the word A, which incorporates the word student, because we don't know what student is actually meant to be yet. So let's take a look at this in code. Uh, we're going to run through the, how the masking process works. Okay, so here we have a function called create mask. Let's just dive into this. So this will be in examples create mask. Here we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're basically going to say, hey, words which are in the future, we're not allowed access to. If we were to formalize this as a matrix, if I go back a slide, we can see that this is a, uh, let me just get rid of the, these arrows. Um, we can see that this is um, a triangular matrix in the upper dimension. Um, so what I mean by this is, let's just say we had a uh, three by three grid. Now, uh, maybe three by three is too small. Let's say we had a four by four grid. Okay, so what we're gonna say is, you're allowed access here, 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 and all of these, but you're not allowed access to any of these words. Okay, so we see that we kind of have this triangle here. So there's a function in PyTorch which allows us to create this triangle uh, or this triangular matrix. And um, we know that the size of this is going to be T by T, where T is our target sequence length. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a matrix of ones. And then we're going to uh, take this try u function, which will create this I think we hover over it. Okay, it doesn't tell us, but it stands for triangular upper. Okay, and I believe the argument is the um, out from what index should we start by having our our ones or our trues and falses. So this is this is basically going to show us trues and ones and zeros. So let, let's just print this out here, um, and then we can actually see what it's what it's like. Uh, actually, I'll just type it in in here. So. Let's just say size is four, similar to that example that we had in the slide. Oops. Okay, so uh, we, we initialize a matrix of ones and then try use will zero out 
um, everything which isn't in so so sorry upper triangle will basically create the um, will keep the ones in the upper quadrant or in the upper triangular part of the matrix and everything else it would zero out okay so where we have zeros are actually going to be the values that we want to keep where we have ones are going to be the values that we don't want to keep so what we're going to do in the second line on line nine we're basically saying hey put trues where there's zeros and these are these are the values that we want we want to keep and put forces everywhere else so if we do uh if we go up and then just equal this to zero so everywhere where there's a one, we're saying, hey, look, false. You are you are not allowed to look in this location. Where there's true, it means you are allowed to look in this location. Okay, cool. Let's um let's go back to to our code. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be creating a mask which has size 10. So this is gonna be 10 by 10. Okay. And uh, I will just expand this a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. So this is 10 across and 10 down. Okay, so this means we'd have a sequence length of 10. And we can see that along our diagonals, we have true, which means, hey, when we're in time step nine, for example, and I should just move this very slightly across. When we're in time step nine, for example, we should have, um, we should be allowed to look at the first nine words, but not the future 10th word. And when we're in time step three, where you should be allowed to look at the first three words, but none of the words after after word three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you if we if we were to create this A range and reshape it into something which is 10 by 10. Let me just put this mask fill on a new line just so we can see what it is step by step. So we'll have this um, we'll have this tensor here. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the mask fill function. So the mask fill will basically say, hey, give me the value of, um, uh, we, we, we have two, two variables which, uh, which we need to run this method. One is the, um, the, the tensor that we want to run the mask fill method on, and the other is the condition which we want to mask. Okay, so what we're saying here is our toy scores matrix. So this will be our... Um, uh, whenever we use this, this will be the, the tensor that we want to apply masking to. So this would be, for example, the target encodings. Now, on these encodings, um, what we want to do is we want to say, hey, where our toy mask is equal to zero. So now what I want to say is, um, and I know this might get a little confusing with all the zeros and the ones, but now false is equal to zero and true is equal to one. Okay, so uh, maybe over here we can we can actually change this to false. So where toy mask is false, we want to mask these values out with a value of minus one. Okay, so now what we have is all the legal locations we have values in. And all the illegal locations, we don't have, um, you know, we have masked values. We're not going to be using minus one. Um, this is just to demonstrate what this mask fill method actually does. Um, and I'll show you the real code that we'll be using in a second. Um, but just to demonstrate that um, what this mask fill method does is we take in the, the, the tensor which we want to mask and we apply a condition to it. So we say wherever it, from, from, our, from our toy mask here, wherever things are equal to false, in that dimension on toy scores, that's what we want to mask, and we want to mask it with a certain value. In this case, the value just happens to be minus one. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're using this in our in our code. So now we'll go to layers, multi-head attention. And what we do is um, whenever we call this multi-head attention, so uh, we call it in the encoder layer and we call it in the decoder layer as well. In the decoder layer, we'll be passing a mask which has this information about the illegal future tokens. So what we're doing is uh, eventually this will reach the scale dot product attention function, um, and you can watch the video on multi head attention to understand when when we reach this uh, reach this condition. If the mask is not none, so if if mask here exists, 
And the reason it will exist is because it exists here and forward. And then it gets passed through this scaled dot product attention here on line 66. So when this exists, so when it's not none, what we're going to do is we're going to say scores. So this is uh, this is in our actual attention process. Scores equals scores dot masked fill. Wherever the mask is false, um, so zero, zero is a falsy value. So uh, false would evaluate to zero, but I can change this to false as well, actually. Maybe that's a, just slightly easier to understand. Um, we want to mask it with this error value, or not an error value, but we want to mask it with an absolutely tiny number, which is basically, um, which is basically saying, hey, look, any computation that you perform on this, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's so big of a number that it's basically not being able to uh, be accounted for as an efficient computation within the, within the network itself. So we're going to mask it out with a number so large um, that the, the, the model just doesn't really know what to do with it and then it will just ignore it. Uh, and then we continue on with the, with the scores. And uh, this, this works the same way as we looked at in the multi-head attention video. Okay, that's all for mask multi-head self-attention. Uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at encoder-decoder attention. See you soon.